We've got an earnings alert here on United Airlines. The stock is popping after hours despite posting a miss on the top and the bottom lines. United says it expects to report a profit for the full year 2022 after a tough first quarter. Phil LeBeau is back with a first on CNBC interview with United CEO Scott Kirby. Phil. Thank you, Melissa. Scott, I don't know how well, else to say this, but that's, <laughs> that's some serious guidance that you yeah. gave for the rest of this year. Yeah. I, I don't want to focus too much on the first quarter. Yeah. I want to instead focus on the reason the stock is moving yeah. higher, profitable second quarter, and then the rest of this year. I just looked at the, before I came over here, the analysts are expecting you guys to lose 230, I think. Yeah. Uh, what's changed? Yeah, I've never seen, uh, really what's changed is demand. I've never seen in my career, and I've been in this industry a long time, such a hockey stick increase in demand, leisure demand but also business demand. We actually expect business tra our business revenue, uh, booked business revenue, to be above 2019 levels uh, in just a few weeks. And we're already booking more business uh, revenue than we have capacity. Um, it's really amazing. We know that it always goes up in the summertime. Spring and summer is, yeah. is the busy time. But you guys expect this type of demand to go well beyond spring and summer. How long does this last? Yeah, look, I think we're in the first inning. This is really the turning point, um, the inflection point for, for coming out of COVID as we transition from pandemic into endemic. Uh, and this is the first quarter. We still have a long way to go on the business travel recovery, a ways to go on Europe. Asia is basically not open yet. Um, and another way I think about this is we're back to 2019 revenue levels and we're producing the kind of 10% operating margins this quarter. But nominal GDP since 2019 has grown by 16%. Normally, we would grow with nominal GDP. That would sort of tell you, if we just get back to the normal trends, there's another 16% to go. I mean, it really is an amazing turnaround. The skeptic would say, look at airfares, and that you guys are capturing that early pent-up demand, and that with airfares at this level, where you're making up the full increase in jet fuel costs, you're not going to be able to keep it at these levels for this long. The industry won't be able to keep yeah. them at these levels. Well, look, I think demand is going to continue to grow. Um, you know, you look at business travel, it, it really is, it's on it. You look at the charts that we have internally, they're just heading up and to the right. It's got a ways to go. European travel, you know, it's really strong right now, but we still have testing requirements. There's going to be a step function increase when that happens. Asia demand is not there yet. I mean, really are, we're still 16 points behind sort of where we should be. Um, and, and fares have gone up compared to pandemic levels, but they're still a great value. And they're still, you know, probably back to kind of 2017, 18 inf inflation adjusted levels. Still a great value, still a great bargain to travel. Um, and I think demand uh, is really just, we're really just in the first inning of the real travel recovery. Scott, Melissa has a question for you. Melissa? Hey, Scott, I was wondering how you think about uh, what the trajectory of this looks like and whether or not there's a certain element of pull forward travel that is going on. We talk about revenge spending a lot. Maybe there's some of that going yeah. on in, in terms of travel and leisure and that spending won't be done later on or next year because it's being done now because it's the first time people can get out and go. Yeah. Well, look, I think it's still a to be determined question. My own opinion is uh, that that's not the case. Um, and, and particularly, we're still well behind trend relative to GDP from a macro level. Uh, and so there's a long way to go. I would also tell you that a year ago, people were saying the exact same thing about domestic leisure travel. It's all been put forward. It's pent up demand. Um, and it's done nothing but accelerate since then. Really, I think part of what happens here is particularly after what we all went through in the pandemic, you know, the value of experience, the recognition of going on a business trip and meeting with a client, going on a, you know, a business conference and, and networking, I think people appreciate it even more. I think there's going to be at least as much demand as there was before and arguably more. Um, I certainly am traveling more uh, and expect to do that, you know, forever. And I think there are a lot of people out there who are going to travel even more than they did before the pandemic started. And will you be more judicious in terms of your capacity? I know you're already being judicious in the yeah. second quarter. Does that continue for the remainder of this year? Yeah, look, there are a lot of challenges uh, around the industry in terms of being able to support the flying. You see a lot of airlines actually having sure. meltdowns. You know, at United, we're fortunate. We've hired 6,000 people. We don't really have a challenge hiring people. We have great careers. But there's all the other infrastructure challenges. And because of that, we're taking our time bringing capacity back. Our number one objective um, is to make sure that we focus on the long term for customers and operate reliably. I'm proud that, you know, so far this month, we're number one in on-time performance of all airlines in the country. We're number one in completion factor. Uh, and our team is doing a great job. But we're not going to let the possibility of short-term profits 
you know, put the customer experience at risk. And we're prioritizing operational reliability. So we're going to keep gradually adding back capacity uh, and making sure that we can do so and do so reliably. Scott Kirby, CEO of United Airlines, on a huge day with, yeah, the top and the bottom for the first quarter. They, they were a miss, but that's not why the stock is moving higher. Yeah. And by the way, Melissa, just so you know, CEOs do have friendly wagers with their CFOs. Scott was telling me, <laughs> he told the CFO, I bet you we top 50 after this earnings report. CFO said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Look, I'm smiling right now. You were now. supposed to tell him that. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a friendly what wager. Win? It was a friendly what wager. What did he win, Phil? <laughs> Uh, what, what did you win? Uh, 20 bucks and pride. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, for, yeah. Okay, not bad. 20 bucks and pride. 50.07 is where the stock is now. Thank you, Phil, and thank you, Scott, as well. We've only begun to scratch the surface of airline earnings, so be sure to tune in to CNBC tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time for an interview with American Airlines CEO Robert Isom and at 1 p.m. to hear the CEO of Alaska Airlines. Let's trade United here. Tim, big, big guy here. Uh, not big guide. I mean, this is massive. The fact that you're talking mm -hmm. about also long haul and, and international increasing rapidly, business travel increasing rapidly. He mentioned that, that actually capacity is down 20 percent from a year. And, and yet TRASM, so total revenue per available seat mile, is, is up almost 17 percent. Airlines are more efficient and, and more profitable today. Now, that's the real key. Watch airlines because often they've disappointed investors. And that's what investors watch in the space is how efficient they can be. But right now, um, at 52 bucks on the chart, he should get an even bigger prize because that's really where you've broken a, a one year downtrend for this company. And I, I think this is a very important day. Um, profitability and, and return to the front of the bus. Yeah. Return to business travel has just begun, Guy. I mean, I know that you like to stay home. <laughs> you haven't been here at the NASDAQ at least for a while. <laughs> but what do, you, what do you make of that? Because if that is the case, that we're just on the cusp of the return of business travel, there's a lot more to come in, in terms of demand for airline tickets. I could take one of those United planes from Morristown into the city. I'd be there every day, Mel. It's a, it's a remarkable guide. And for context, pre-COVID, United was a $92 stock. Today, it's a better run company, to Tim's point, far more efficient. I get fuel costs, okay, but that's in the stock right now. I'm not saying it's going back to 90, but this should be mid-60s. And we made the same case for Delta a couple days ago. The airlines, to me, still have a lot of room to the upside. What is the read through to the reopen trade? Uh, well, I thought your question was a good one. I think there is some pull forward. It doesn't need to be all or none. But uh, one thing, though, I want to point out, comparing the stock to 90, I look at the enterprise value. The enterprise value is all the way back to the high, right, when you include that debt that they had to take. So maybe it should be. Maybe to Tim's point, they're a better run airline now. If they have capacity constraint, meaning that they'll get much better pricing, I can see how it makes sense. I don't own them, though. I'll just say this. Acknowledgement of that bet almost ensures that the stock closed below 50 tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just telling you that flat out. We'll check but it tomorrow. This is the CFO, so it's, it's a really... Fine. They both win. <laughs> 50-25, so it looks like Scott Kirby's the winner still.